Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain to you why you should do grid journaling. One word, challenge. Grid journaling will challenge you, it'll pull you out of your comfort zone and force you or give you the opportunity to learn new things. Let's get started. I'm working on my 9 by 12 Cancer Mixed Media Art Journal. I've given it a coat of white gesso just to prepare it, my usual MO, and then I've traced some squares and rectangles on here. Doesn't matter what size, doesn't even matter what shape that you have. I just traced around my post-it notes and then I made a rectangular shape to fit in there. I wanted it to be somewhat of a pleasing layout. That's me. But you can just stack them on there any old way. You can be as precise or imprecise as you want to be. So one of the ways that grid journaling can channel, challenge you is it can challenge you to use difficult color schemes. I like the green, yellow, and orange, but in the past, anytime I try to use it, I really struggle. So I'm forcing myself to struggle because I figure on all these squares, maybe I'm gonna figure something out by doing it. You're never going to get better at something if you avoid it. So challenge number two, do things in a different order or way than what you have normally done it. Lots of times I blend colors with my fingers, wet on wet, or I'll collage first before I put color down. So I'm just breaking that mold and forcing myself, challenging myself to do it differently because then I'm going to have different problems, which I will then have to figure out and solve. So I'm putting on the three colors and I'm just trying to put something different in every square. Because again, you want new challenges in each square. So I'm putting the paint on differently. I am moving not as fast as what you're seeing on the screen because the video is sped up, but I'm moving quite quickly. I'm trying not to overthink what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. And I'm going to have faith that it will work out or that I can just keep adding more layers to get it to work out. I find it really interesting to be watching this back as I'm editing. I, I'm seeing things that I didn't see when I was doing it. So another challenge that grid journaling can give you is to use what's around. Because I'm moving quickly, I am limiting myself to what's within arm's reach. What is out on my desk? So this is a piece of embossed paper it's been sitting on my desk for months. Made it into the collage bin. And today it's getting used in little bits. Now, these first layers, some of this is going to get covered up, as you can see here. Some of it is going to show, some of it is not going to show. And that's okay, it is the process of the grid journaling that is important. It is the learning that you do along the way. So normally I would collage first and then put paint on. So here I've done paint and now I'm putting collage. I had the embossed papers and then I have this number sheet that I seemingly have an excess of and I'm putting some of that on each of the squares in different places, in different ways. I'm liking the black and, and white contrast.
this grid journaling, I think, took me about 45 minutes in real time. Now I'm adding some texture paste through this stencil. Now this stencil has this floral motif, and again, I was limiting myself to things that were already out. So this happened to be one of the stencils. I think it was somewhat limiting. I would have picked if I was doing a page, maybe a different motif, something a little bit m less specific, more just pattern, but I wanted some texture. So I'm doing different techniques. So I've done collaging. I've done applying applying the paint. Now I'm putting on texture paste because I like having texture on my page. I like how mediums get into that texture and how that shows up. I believe it adds a lot of interest to it. Are this is this a color scheme that you would work with? Let me know. What color scheme do you struggle with? Or what colors do you never use? I challenge you, use those ones and then come back and tell me about it. Here I'm stenciling with this ethereal stencil and I'm adding contrast here with the black and white or just black. I've got a lot of white space at this moment. Now with grid journaling, one of the things that is challenging that I didn't mention is you have to be willing to give up what is there, to risk it. You may like it at a certain stage, but go one more layer, go one more layer, because you'll only discover what could happen. So many times people have said, I would have stopped here, but oh, I was, it was so much better when you went the next step and the next step. Mixed media art journaling is really about all those layers. This botanical stencil, Barberry Bud, looking back at this, I don't think this added much to this. I, I picked this because of the floral stenciling I did with the modeling paste, but I really didn't like it or it didn't give me what I thought it would have. And this is me not downgrading what I did, but this is me analyzing it and saying, if I was doing this again, did this add anything or not? So you can always take gesso and knock back what you don't like. It also blends the different surfaces, collage paper, softens edges. So just applying gesso with your finger as I'm doing is just neutralizing it somewhat in some places. Because quite honestly, at this stage, I really didn't like some of a lot of this. So it was like, okay, well now there's the challenge. I need to make these work. I'm loving the middle one. I'm loving the green one, the rectangle on the left-hand side. Now I'm just adding a little bit more paint, brightening up those colors because I've knocked back them, adding more. So one of the challenges with grid journaling, because you have, I have nine squares or spaces, you want them to be the same in some way, cohesive in some way, working together, but different. Because different means you have different challenges in each and you're maximizing your learning. And you can do something different in each and that shows you different ways of achieving similar goals. Quite honestly, with grid journaling, I mean, there are many times, and I'm being completely honest, that I'm going, I don't like this, but you just keep going. Do something else. What's missing? And if you're really stumped, stop. Take a break. Move away.
you know, I'm looking at each one and saying, what do I like about this? What don't I like? I'm loving that square in the top left hand corner with just the green and the yellow. And I'm discovering that if I take yellow and the orange, I'm liking those squares. If I take the green and the yellow, I'm liking it. I don't like the green and the orange together. But I'm thinking at this point that I need to have that on each square, that I need all three colors. And that's very linear, linearly thinking, or whatever the word is, linear thinking that I had to, because there was no rule that said that. I could have used, I could have had one with just yellows and different tones of yellows, ones with just oranges or oranges, you know, using those three main colors all on one page or different amounts of them. I really don't like that one where it's like 50% green and 50% orange. I think it just big fail. And the two colors aren't working together yet. Although the, the rectangle in the middle on the left hand side, I'm liking that one better. It's not as, it's a little bit more random. So I added the orange through the stencil there and I'm liking that pop of orange on the green. So there's a way of in introducing the orange through a small scale stencil. And then I'm grab some hooker's green. So it's a bit darker green and I'm liking that. And I think this is where it turned in and I'm thinking, okay, this is working. What I like about some of this is it is, you can see every layer somewhat. They all represent it there. Although you do, do notice that I did get rid of my white space. I'm trying to bring out the texture paste, the texture of that, and I'm rubbing over it. And that's being a bit of a struggle for me. It's not working the way I want it to. And that might be the type of stencil that I grabbed, but I'm not done yet. So another part of grid journaling is to challenge preconceived notions. I was thinking the white, wouldn't look good if I stamped it on here. Well, so try it anyways. Experiment. Challenge those preconceived ideas and see, are you right or are you wrong? And I was wrong. I didn't think that the white was going to have as big an impact on it. And at this stage, I really start loving some of the squares. It's just add it. And this goes back to that same but different. Having all of them with the white dot stamp just made all of them work together in my mind. So that's, you know, I'm filing that away. Have a couple things that all of them have to tie them all together. And then I'm stamping some script stamp on them as well. But it could have been any small scale black stamping. Some I'm doing more stamping, some are getting very little of it. But they all kind of have it. So while they're all different, they're all playing really nicely together. So I'm thinking I'm pretty much done. So now I'm going to edge each square or rectangle using my shading technique with black acrylic paint on my angle brush. And I'm just, just like I would normally edge my page. And this, you know, lets you look at it and decide 
Do you like the composition? Do you like how the colors are? What works? What doesn't work here? So I'm evaluating the squares as I'm going, saying, if I would I do this as an art journal page background? Then I decide I want a little bit more contrast, brighter colors, and I grab red and I put it on there and I was like, okay, that did not give me what I wanted at all. But you know what? It's all about experimenting. Keep going. So then I take black and I'm adding that and that I like that maybe a little bit better than the red. I have this feeling that something was missing. In my mind, something was missing. And at this stage, I'm not quite figuring it out. I'm on the right path. I grab my Posca pen and I am roughly sketching around each of the squares and rectangles. And overall, I'm quite happy. But I've decided I'm going to do me. I want to turn this into now an art journal page. I've learned the lessons. I've struggled. I've challenged myself. I've done the grid journaling, but I'm going to turn it into an art journal page because, well, that's me. So challenge. You do you. Be true to yourself. There are no rules in this, so you get to determine what you do and how you do it. So I'm going to put these flowers on there with that to tie in that flower motif. I typed out a sentiment, the earth laughs in flowers. I had these flowers in my, in my uh, focal bin. And I'm just putting that there and just basically turning the grids into an art journal page. Easy peasy, not overthinking it going black and white so that all those colors, I can still see those backgrounds and I can come back and use this as a reference for a background. So there I'm thinking I am done. I'm liking this one, I'm loving this one. I like the bright yellow, I like the middle one. The orange and yellow I like better than the ones with green. Don't even mind this one, but the top three, I do not like them at all. They, I would not duplicate that on purpose. And then as I'm putting it away, I decide, oh, what if I take my distress crayons and tweak the colors a little? So my orange, a green, and a yellow. And I'm just rubbing it on and smudging it. And it's kind of a soft application. And I'm loving this. And the light bulb went on. One of the reasons I haven't used my distress crayons is because I work typically larger. And when you're applying the distress crayons, you're not going to use them to colorize a 9 by 12 page. But I can use it on the 9 by 12 page at the finishing stage, just like I'm doing here. Major light bulb discovery. adding some green and I'm loving the smudge look. I'm loving the brighter colors. That's what's been missing all along that I kept trying to put in just that extra contrast, deepness of colors, multiple shades of yellow or orange or green. And I can say that when I'm done, I'm actually liking all the squares. So one little step away from it. So that's why you should try grid journaling. It will challenge you, push you out of your comfort zone and give you the opportunity to learn and to grow as an artist. I'm looking forward to my next grid journaling. Let me know if you try grid journaling. You can find me in my Facebook group, 
art journaling and mixed media creations come join the creation ship until next time go get creative